Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, there's no doubt that the demands of homeschooling amidst the coronavirus crisis is a major concern for Australian parents, especially if you're a parent working from home. Now, the government jurisdiction in some Australian states are for children to be homeschooled in term two, with only schools open for vulnerable students and children of essential workers. In all other states, there's an increasing number of parents opting for remote learning to help keep their kids home during the COVID-9 restrictions. Now, supervising children in their schooling whilst being expected to be efficient in your day job has the potential to create a great deal of stress and family conflict. Now, while the sudden uh, disappearance of kindergartens, preschools, primary and secondary schools may be absolutely de destabilizing for parents, they, there is actually easy ways to combat this situation. And to help share this homeschooling advice to parents, we're actually joined today by House Call Doctors Clinical Director, Dr. Ryan Harvey. Now, Dr. Harvey will share his tips on how to maintain a healthy routine for kids whilst juggling homeschooling during uh, the COVID-9 isolation. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Harvey. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, really, really honoured for your time. Now, these are really tough and difficult times, um, but parents and students are really sort of up for this challenge. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this? I think... Uh, most definitely families and their children are up for this challenge. I mean, as a parent myself, um, keeping your kids um, educated and also entertained while in a quarantine lockdown um, and also managing to potentially work from home yourself can, can be challenging, but I'm sure it's a challenge that um, um, we're all up to. And um, I thought um, I would uh, share some some recommendations and some tips from a from a, a doctor's point of view um, to make sure that um, <clears throat> we get the best outcomes throughout this period. Yeah. Now, as a doctor, really, what's been your experience with patients um, around sort of the COVID nineteen um, so sort of crisis at the moment? Mm, yeah, in relation to patients, um, there's a lot of obviously anxiety out there in relation to. COVID-19 um, and this um, has led lots of families um, at this point in time to be very reluctant to approach a lot of the healthcare services um, which um, we really need to address because uh, during this time all the usual um, illnesses that people will catch or um, become ill with um, are still occurring in the community and we don't want families um, afraid or anxious to approach healthcare at this point in time because they could become um, unwell and have a bad outcome because they've refrained from um, seeing their doctor or seeing a doctor. So it's one point I'd really like to get across. Um, the doctors are still there. We at House School Doctor are still seeing patients and we're doing it using all the proper protective equipment and the, the correct hygiene um, routines and recommendations from, from government and from our clinical training. So if um, families have um, you know, a child that, that becomes sick, what's your opinion, what should they do? Mm. So if a family has a child that's sick, they most definitely should approach a um, healthcare professional and obtain advice. Now, this can be in many forms. This can be from uh, attending your general practitioner in the after hours. It could be seeing a service like Haskell Doctors, or it could be uh, approaching a telehealth service. Um, we offer both at Haskell doc Doctors. Um, the worst thing the family could do is um, not do anything and their child becomes more unwell and unfortunately then has to be seen at a later date in a hospital situation um, which is not ideal. Um, so when there's first signs of illness and the parent's concern, then they should be seen in primary healthcare as a first, first step. And all the necessary precautions are in place to make that as safe as possible at the moment. In your opinion, why do you think families are avoiding health healthcare workers at the moment? Yeah, so I think there's a perception that 
um, the coronavirus uh, is at the hospitals and it's with the doctors or that's where the patients are. Mm -hmm. uh, where in reality, there is already uh, fantastic procedures in place um, to triage and screen patients with potential COVID-19 to other areas of both you know, hospitals and medical clinics. So patients with other illnesses don't necessarily need to even come in contact um, with these patients and all the appropriate uh, procedures are in place to avoid that because as doctors, we're most aware of how our coronavirus is spread and we do everything to prevent that spread. But we're also very aware that all the usual things that you'll get sick with are still going to occur. You need to be seen so that yours and your family's uh, health is maintained throughout, throughout this period. Mm -hmm. Now, you've mentioned mm -hmm. before for parents um, with children that have been homeschooled and or that are home um, with the restrictions that it's really important for families to maintain balance and healthy habits. Can you just tell us a little bit about um, this thought process and why you think it's so important? Yeah, I think it's important um, that we create this uh, routine at home. So it's important to be flexible and adaptive when creating this home routine. Um, and I think it's important that the children themselves become involved in creating um, the plan for the day. So they're engaged and they're more willing to undertake um, what the, whatever routine that you create. And it's also important that this uh, reflects in essence all the important um, aspects that are required, the education aspects, the physical exercise aspects, the eating well aspects all need to continue throughout this time. It's not a time just to um, pop down in front of Netflix for the next few months. So there needs, needs to be that structured um, routine that also incorporates that flexibility. So there's some time for learning, there's some time for, some, for meals, some time for physical exercise. And it's important if we create that, then we'll be at our, our best. We have at our best physical health and mental health for the family throughout throughout the period. Mm -hmm. And what do you see has been the greatest concern for families during this time? Yeah, so the, the greatest concern, I think, are those challenges of our health, maintaining our health, and also making sure that our children are stalled in their, their learning, their education, and they're not going backwards. So I think a lot of families are very much. <clears throat> want to make sure that their children's education still progresses throughout this time, make sure that their children maintain good physical health and obviously um, avoid illness in this time. And I think balancing all that together, and often in a lot of parents', parents um, um, circumstance, they may also have to work from home, which is an additional um, you know, challenge that um, has to be overcome. You know, I was um, reading an article earlier and it mentioned that um, if we don't look after ourselves and our family well during this time, our health can actually, as, as we come out of this, this pandemic and this crisis, can actually be worse than, than what we've actually come in because we're not physically moving as much, we're possibly eating more and or eating not enough of the healthy healthier foods. Um, and really, it's it's the message is very, very strong that we, we do need to be looking after our health, um, mental, physical, um, during this time. So we do ensure that when we get to the other end of it, that we are going to be um, healthier and, and not the, the, the flip side of that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, very important. So now there's two main aspects of that. One of them is diet. So the important thing is obviously make sure we're stocking up on plenty of the fruits, vegetables, and those healthy snacks during the day. So you don't give in to the, the, the unhealthy temptations all the time. Um, it's vital to make sure we keep up our fluids as well, stay hydrated. So keeping plenty of bottles of water around the home. Um, physical exercise should be planned in, into the day as well. So just, just like at school for your children, there's break periods where they can go out and play. There needs to be break periods where they can get some physical exercise, whether that be in the home, the backyard, or um, uh, down the park for that period of time, obviously keeping the normal uh, physical distancing measures uh, in place 
um, that we're required to do at this time. But there's plenty of plenty of options for exercise, and it's a good opportunity for the family to be creative around this and what find out what works for them in this time. Mm -hmm. Now we published your article titled "Advice to Parents Homeschooling Their Kids." Now, for someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, so uh, we wrote the article. I wrote the article um, because I wanted to give um, parents a bit of direction in terms of how are we going to um, manage all these these additional um, aspects throughout this time, being the education of our children, their health, their diet, their exercise, and also the normal hygiene that's required at this time. So I went about writing the article and first um, putting down um, how to create a bit of a routine, what are the important things that we need to do in terms of our diet, the important aspects we should put in, in terms of our physical health, and then a bit about um, how to the appropriate hand hygiene techniques and the, you know, the aspect of it's very important good evidence shows that we should wash our hands for 20 seconds at a time and this is the best way that we can rid ourselves of the germs um, and your parents can be involved in that and teach the kids um, how to do this and so uh, you could come up with a song um, there's many of them going around at the moment that last for 20 seconds and that's it can be a fun activity that the family can get involved in um, and just making sure that um, we schedule the time to do those hygiene activities as well, which involve cleaning up, um, washing up after the meals, cleaning all our workplaces, um, toys, etc. cetera, um, and making sure that alongside with a good, um, flexible routine that we develop for the family and the children, that we also are maintaining um, really good basic hygiene practices in the home, which will be the best way of staying healthy in this time. Mm -hmm. And should families be sticking, now this is about homeschooling now, but a question for you, but mm. should families be sticking to a routine when homeschooling? I'd love to know your advice. Yeah, I think routine's key. What, whatever your routine will be, will be what's best for you. Now, it can be, uh, flexible and adaptive, i.e. some some days um, it might be a good opportunity to focus on a different aspect of the child's learning or there may be an opportunity to do a different physical activity. But keeping um, a routine that works for your children, works for you, um, is, is what's key and making sure that the children are also involved in developing uh, that routine. Um, and they're happy with it. If, we're, if your children are happy with it, you're happy with it, then it's something you're going to be able to, to maintain for, for weeks or maybe months, depending how long we need to do this for. Um, if there's conflict over the routine, then it's going to just be more difficult to maintain that in the, in the home and in the family. Yeah, I'd love to know your opinion. Do you think that the, the sense of complete chaos is actually more um, anxiety provoking than kids actually having a schedule from that perspective? Uh, most definitely. So I think um, having no routine chaos, um, no direction for what we're going to do from Monday to Friday um, will become much more difficult to manage over, over days and weeks. and it, it'll lack um, sort of a goal of where you want to get through to with your children, say in terms of education or even physical activity. Um, developing that routine will allow you to set some goals and set some sort of end points of where you and your family and your children want to be, um, say two weeks from now, four weeks from now, two months from now. Um, the complete chaos and no routine will, I think, increase anxiety. Um, and lead to sort of worse mental and physical health outcomes for the family over this, this period. So creating something that works for your family and that you can uh, move forward through um, mm. so your children aren't stalled and they're continuing to develop, I think is very important. 
And so do you think it's, it's easier to get buy-in from the kids so they actually know what to expect with all of this then? And then with that, to set timelines and to make the guidelines quite clear so they actually get some, some structure in their mind as, as to what's actually happening and when? Mm. Yeah, I think it's important to set those type of timeline structures. Mm. Um, so we all know, so we're all on the same page basically throughout the day. Um, I also think, uh, you know, we can be a bit too strict. So sometimes it may be, maybe we we move move lunch up ten minutes because um, that's appropriate for that time of the day. So there has to be some give and take. And obviously, sometimes you may see your ch your children are becoming tired, losing energy during this um, at home mass class. So maybe the best thing is to go outside for some fresh air at that time. So we have to be a bit adaptive as well in that sense. And that leads perfectly to, to my ne next question. Do you think it's important for kids and parents to be getting some outdoor time as part of their homeschooling? Mm, yeah, most definitely. I think the, the worst thing would just be to stay inside for the next term. Um, getting outside is very important, not only for our physical health, but also our mental health um, and being, being active and having the fresh air. Obviously, the normal health health uh, messages like sun safety still still exists if we're outside, um, as it does at the school, um, like in Sunbok and your yeah, hat, and, and um, making sure it's not in the hottest times of the day. So we still have to be mindful of that. But you know, being outside, whether it's your backyard or if you live in an apartment, it's the local park, maintaining appropriate physical distancing is very very important at this time, and it should be should be a daily daily activity in my opinion and you mentioned earlier about um before about the importance of keeping areas clean and sanitized so how often should we be sanitizing and cleaning workspaces toys and devices really to make sure that the home um remains a safe place yeah so <clears throat> rough recommendations maybe every every 15 minutes or so after an activity um say if you you use toys, you know, take a few moments just to give them a wipe over. Um, larger um, activities that go on for longer, say um, cooking or whatnot, then we obviously want to clean up after that. Um, but um, regularly throughout the day is the message. Um, we don't want to leave these surfaces at this time to you know, become very dirty and dusty for days at an end and then just clean once a week. Um, but now is not really the time for that. We know that these bugs live on surfaces. So if these surfaces are, are cleaned at regular intervals after we've used them, um, then that'll reduce the risk as much as possible um, to the family. Mm -hmm. Well, you've given us some really um, insightful information during the chat today. How would you summarise, I guess, your key messages out to families at the moment who have kids that are um, being homeschooled? Yeah, so the key message is, I think um, it is a challenge, but I'm, I'm sure every family is up to it. Um, you need to develop a routine that works best for you, works best for your family, that maintains your, both your physical and mental health throughout this period. Um, and if we do these things, then your family will move forward and your children will move forward in their education and come out the other side um, healthier and happier as a result. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then overall, that um, I guess not to avoid any healthcare workers or <laughs> any um, healthcare professionals during this time that if, and as you mentioned before, could you just expand on that point one more time? Yeah, no, it's important that during this time, if you become unwell, then you seek medical attention. And um, the worst thing you can do is stay at home, become very sick and unwell, and then end up in an emergency situation. So if you become unwell, please seek health care. That's a very important message at this point in time. That's wonderful. So grateful for your time today, Dr. Harvey, and hope to have the opportunity to talk with you again in the not too distant future. Take care. Have a great day. Great. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.